My name is Manda, I am your Ambience Music Producer and today I will give you an updated 2023 version of my live looping setup. So, as a subscriber, you probably already know what I am up to on this channel. But if you are new here, I wanted to introduce myself. I call myself an ambience music producer because I am in love with ambience and I love great soundscapes and I mash them together with beats. I am a music maker and live looping performer and definitely a gear nerd. And this is my studio. If you like what you hear, make sure to subscribe and there will be a lot more fun stuff coming up this entire year. Let's get into it. Since I started my YouTube channel, the number one frequently asked question that I have gotten are these. You guys are truly interested in live looping, <laughs> let me tell you that. To be able to make all of this fancy music, performances and whatever, obviously I need some cool and neat gear. Let's get into what pieces of gear I use in my live looping setup and what they look like. my gear are lined up on my desk at all times because I want it to be easy to just dive in and start recording. They're always here. I just don't know why my back is always hurting. I don't get it. Like I don't. The 2020 M1 MacBook Pro. This is a laptop that I bought a year ago because I wanted to change things up and give it a go. I'm actually a PC lover. I'm very aware of what I get for my money's worth in a PC compared to a Mac. The reason I bought it, because I am curious, I want to try it out in music production and see what the M1 actually is capable of compared to the Intel processors. So I just wanted to see what it can do and how it works in music production. This next piece of gear is essential for live looping. It's the Boss RC202. I've been using it for two years now. You will get a full review and walkthrough on this alone. You find it here. I'm in love with this thing. It's so neat, it's so small, it's so versatile, it is so easy to travel with. I love everything about it, really. The next is the Arturia Minilab MK2. This is a 25 keys MIDI keyboard that is USB powered, also very travel friendly, which I really love. And it's really beautiful in this design. I love the eight pads. I love the 16 knobs that you can custom set up however you want them to. Uh, it's so good that I don't even feel the need to use uh, full-size piano. So the next piece is my Mackie Pro FX 6 v 3 This is actually a combined mixer, interface and effects. After using it now for almost three years, I feel that I could definitely cut out the effects. I never use them. I use it as an interface and I use it as a mixer. So for headphones, these are Bayer Dynamic DT250. As you can see, I have used them so much, they are breaking down. I'm not even kidding. Like, look, that is because they are really good. These are closed back headphones, which I use for everything. Mixing, mastering, recording. So as you already know, if you're into music production, they are not like perfect for mixing. I love the sound quality. I love the frequency spectrum in these. I have nothing to complain about really, except from the comfort at long hours of mixing. They really have done their job all of these years. As you can see, I do not use loudspeakers or monitors in my studio. If I would use monitors, I would have to acoustically treat this room and I just do not have the money or time or 
will to do that right now. Also, I use guitar effects in my live looping setup. Uh, one of them is New Neighbor Immerse Reverberator, Reverb, Delay and Shimmer Pedal. I also use one of my new favorites, uh, New Old, I would say because it's super vintage. It's a Ross compressor from the 70s. Do you hear what I'm saying? It just makes the sound so warm and cozy. It's amazing. I also have the MXR Phaser, which is also a vintage guitar effect from the 70s. Uh, do I even have to tell you how amazing it sounds? I will go through all my guitar effects in another video. Let me know if you would like to see that. I also use the Power Plant Tuner, just a basic uh, tuner before and during the live looping session. Last but not least, in my effects chain, I use a uh, foot switch because I'm a guitar player and when you are live looping, let me demonstrate with my ukulele. <laughs> You're playing a loop like... And then you're gonna have the time to take your hand all the way to the looper and pause your loop. I swear you don't have time. A foot switch makes the job way easier. That was the gear. For software, I am actually using Pro Tools. And some of you might wonder now, as a live looping performer, why the hell would you use Pro Tools? Let me tell you why. All of my teenage years, I've been working in Pro Tools, so I'm very comfortable and used to this DAW. If I were starting out, I would definitely go for probably Ableton, you know? like everyone else. It's become my thing that I actually am a Pro Tools user and still do live looping. And the truth is, it's not a problem at all. Pro Tools is not made for live looping, but it doesn't mean that you can't do live looping in Pro Tools. Ableton is made for looping and that's the big difference. Like it works perfectly fine as always have been. If you wanna see more of how I do live looping in Pro Tools, I would love to show you that. Just let me know in the comments. Honestly, let's be a little real here. If you think that live looping is all rainbows and flowers, think again. I've spent so many hours failing, like experimenting, accidentally deleting everything, creating sounds out of your worst nightmare. It takes a lot of practice, a lot of experimenting, a lot of patience. Yeah, please take that with you. All of the experience and fun does not come the first day. In the end, it's just all worth the hard work. Let's get into how I connect my entire setup. The centerpiece of live looping, except from my laptop, is obviously the live looping station where most of the connections go. This is powered by a DC power adapter. It's also important that the looper is USB powered when working with a computer and a DAW, otherwise it won't work. It can be used though as a standalone looper without the USB connection, but it still needs the power. So next part is connecting the looper to an interface. That is if you want to record what you're doing. I use these left and right stereo outputs that goes all the way to my interface, line in inputs. These are the inputs that needs to be rooted in your DAW. As you might know by now, I'm a guitar player, so let's plug in the guitar. But before I do, there is an effects chain, remember? So you would start out with the guitar followed by the effects in the order that you prefer. The quarter inch cable from the last effect in your chain is then connected into the quarter inch jack at the back of the looper. Note that it doesn't have to be a guitar, just any instrument with this kind of connection. Here comes the XLR cable that I use to connect my microphone. I tend to always use the wonderful Shure Beta 58A. Not that I don't love condenser microphones, I mean they make the voice really crisp, but it also picks up everything. 
A dynamic microphone like this will pick up the front noise since it's a cardioid. It's perfectly durable and perfect on the go as well. This is connected in the XLR input in the back. So I get a lot of questions about how my Arturia MIDI keyboard is connected. It's simply plugged in with the USB connection straight into my laptop. But to be able to use it as an instrument when looping, it needs to run together with your DAW. That way you can use whatever VSTs you love in your performance. This is also why it's really important with a smooth CPU performance. Don't forget to make sure that your DAW's playback engine, your audio output, is rooted to the RC202 and not your interface like a normal session. I don't use the interface as a playback engine when looping. It's only picking up the output signal from the looper to be able to record my looping sessions in Pro Tools. Last but not least, let's connect the foot switch into the EXP jack. The world of looping is a wonderful place once you've come by the hardware obstacles. It's my best decision ever. I mean, what a place to explore and have fun with music. So this was the entire gear and hardware connection in my setup, but there's obviously more when it comes to software and settings. I mean, I could go on forever. If you miss something in this particular video, drop a comment and I could make another video about that topic if there are more of you that are interested. And all of my fellow gear nerds and musicians, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and feel free to ask questions or drop by with your requests of your favorite topic and it might get featured. Why is my back always hurting? I do not get it. I feel like I'm working out. I feel like I'm doing the things I'm supposed to. Also, I have a website, which is mandamusic.com. Let's see, you can see. And here I collect like my latest news, releases, uh, what I do. I like my new website a lot. I think it's a way to collect everything that I've ever done in a nice, like a resume almost. Make sure to follow me everywhere, make sure to subscribe, like this video if you like this kind of content, and we'll see each other in the next video! Click on this video for more related content like this. Yes! I'm gonna go ahead and do some more work in the studio.